What's up, everybody? My name is Shannon, and I am still waiting for my Seder, and today we are talking about the third book in the Ravenspire series, The Traitor Prince by C.J. Redwine. So I have quickly become completely obsessed with the series, and I will, I've said it before, I will say it again, if you're not reading the Ravenspire series, highly recommend that you do, and the great thing is, is that all of these books are standalones, they just take place in the same universe, so you can really pick up and start reading whenever you want. So if this book sounds interesting to you, might as well just go ahead and pick it up, because spoiler alert, highly recommend. Going into this, I had no idea really what fairy tale it was supposed to be based on. It kind of sounded like The Goose Girl, which is a very lesser known story in that a princess is forced to trade places with her maid, and then the maid becomes the princess, and the princess is forced to be the goose girl, and lots of fun things happen. You know Brothers Grimm, obviously somebody's gonna end up dying and chopped up into little pieces, but in this book we know that it is about a prince. He's been away at a boarding school for about 10 years, so nobody in his kingdom knows what he looks like. But Prince Javan is very much like, I have to be the best all, at all costs. Like, I have to be the best. I have to be the top of my class. He's doing this for his mother, and he is very eager to return home to his people to start fulfilling his duties and being the prince that he is supposed to be. However, a coup has been starting to form in his kingdom, and they are planning to put a false prince on the throne. So they send a bunch of assassins to try to kill Prince Javan. On. Obviously, that doesn't really go super well because he is so amazing at basically everything because he's always been striving to be the best, but it does land Prince Javan in prison. There's a huge underground prison in his kingdom, and that is where he's basically sent to live the rest of his days while this false prince takes his place. However, there is a little bit of a glimmer of hope at the end of the tunnel because in this prison, they are currently hosting a competition, and if you win the competition, you win an audience with the king, and you get to ask for anything that you want. And he knows that if his father could just see him, then he would know that he's the real prince. And even though he hasn't seen him in 10 years, like it would happen, he'd be able to be back on the throne, and everything would be as it should be. Obviously, that's going to be a lot harder than he thinks it's going to be. I really enjoyed this book. I wasn't expecting it to take place entirely in this underground prison. There are a lot of like training for fight scenes and like kind of going through and beating up all of these monsters, but we get to spend so much time with Prince Javan, and we also get to spend a lot of time with a slave girl that he meets there, Sajda. She has a very big secret, and she's been dreaming of freedom for her entire life, so she doesn't doesn't trust easily and she doesn't like people. She's very much a very like hard murder girl who will rather like punch you in the face than give you a hug, but she really starts to take a liking to Prince Siobhan and she decides to help him. And I really, really love their dynamic. That's something that I can't believe CJ Redwine is able to do. With each book, each romance is so different, like they are unlike the ones that we've seen before it, and I really, really appreciate that, and this one has so much angst. By the time I got to the end of this book, I was on the edge of my seat. Like, there's, there was a point where we had, like, literally just, like, pages left, like, less than 20 pages, and I still wasn't sure how it was going to end. I couldn't stop. I was like, oh my god, is this gonna be okay? I think it's gonna end badly. I don't know what's gonna happen here. It was great, and I love it, and I really appreciate CJ Redwine for just sh taking my heart and just, like, shutting it in a blender full of glass. It's great! I highly recommend it. What I also loved about this book is that we do get to spend some time in the head of the false prince, and he is a really messed up dude, and he is definitely done being a pawn in other people's games, and you really see just how capable he is to pull all this off. So as things start happening and things start changing, being able to be inside his head and inside Prince Javon's head and just seeing how both of them change and how both of them kind of are willing to do anything to survive, you really do see how similar they are, which is really scary because like the False Prince is a really scary dude, but it's really, really cool to see. I absolutely love it. Like I said, you can read these books pretty much in any order that you like. This one, it is revealed that it takes place a about two years after the events of the Shadow Queen, we do have another little like Easter egg for Queen Lorelai. We do have an Easter egg um, getting to meet Princess Ari, and I have learned that one of the characters that we meet in this book, he doesn't play a major part or anything, 
but he's going to be a major player in the next book in the series. So that's how they're all connected. It's just kind of little Easter eggs. They all take place in the same world, but you can really read these in any order that you like. And I really appreciate that. I really appreciate how self-contained that they are because you feel like you go on a complete journey with each character and to have it be like, oh, but we're going to have more of them later. Like, I'd love to see more of each of these characters, especially Javon and Sajda, because they end on a very interesting note. As much as I would love to see that, I really like that their stories feel complete and it feels like the book is closed and you can put it up on the shelf and you can kind of revisit it just whenever you like. I do think that maybe the Trader Prince might be my favorite out of the series. I'm not sure. I wasn't expecting to like it as much as I did, but it was really, really good. So it's definitely getting an A plus for me. Once again, highly recommend that you check these books out. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to hit that like button down below and don't forget to subscribe so you can talk books with me every week. That is everything I got for today and I will see you next time. Bye.